in different countries. So here we have data about some European countries. So let's wait for a couple of seconds. We have this data source now, data set in the system. And let's build a couple of not very complicated reports. First of all, uh, let's build a table. Uh, with and let's visualize several indicators in the table, for example, number of documents that needed in particular countries, in Austria, in Belarus, in Belgium, Bulgaria, Finland. Let's choose some defined time selection. So we've got the table. <laughs> let's also visualize another indicator time to import using color. So uh, red color is bad situation, green is good. Let's duplicate the table and here visualize documents to, number of documents to import indicator using colorful charts. So first report sheet, let's assume it's, it's ready. Let's add another one where we would like to visualize uh, something in dynamics. Let's uh, put uh, cost to export indicator on the uh, bar charts in dynamics. And let's compare several countries, six European countries on their efficiency. Let's see what was happened in 2009. Let's sort countries right here. And we can see that in Finland, the, the lowest value of indicator is the best situation. The, the worst one is in Belarus, in, in Bulgaria, in this example. So we can, we have additional services here to change color scheme and so on and so forth. Uh, let's add another one report sheet. Uh, let's say with, um, uh, bubble chart, so-called bubble charts analysis. It's a kind of multi-dimensional analysis. We can compare different countries uh, by several indicators simultaneously. For example, uh, let's put on different taxes uh, again our indicators about time to, it, to import, about number of documents to export, and um, uh, one dimension is timeline, so we can uh, play this bubble chart and let's define uh, cost to to import uh, let's assign cost to import to the size of bubble so we've got the the chart we can see that the highest value for all indicators is in Belarus it's actually the not very good situation we can trace it we can see we can play the bubble chart and see how the situation is actually improving in Belarus while for example a blue bubble, uh, which is for Bulgaria, so the situation is becoming even worse. Uh, and that's it, another one, uh, maybe the last one, report sheet. Here we operate with uh, areas. Uh, the size of area could be, again, time to export. Color of area could be number of documents to import. And selecting time period, selecting countries, we again can analyze the situation in different European countries uh, in, with selected indicators. And playing this chart, we can see how the countries are changing their positions from year to year. So we are done with our combined report. And as you could see, it took for me less than five minutes uh, to go from loading data uh, and making a couple of, of course, not very complicated reports. And now we can see this report in the presentation mode to list like pages, like slides. We can send it to our colleagues. Uh, so this is example, this is vision of prognosis on such kind of tool, data discovery tool that allows uh, users, business users, to uh, fulfill their business tasks without waiting for IT uh, on their own. Let's now uh, come back to looking at our trends. And the next trend is, uh, as you remember, predictive and prescriptive analytics. So uh, analysts uh, predict that this market will grow. Uh, and the reasons are clear, because such tasks, forecasting tasks, planning tasks, are of key importance for any organization. And Gartner, for example, uh, illustrates this fact as follows. So we, on the screen, we can see uh, four top level BI tools categories, uh, descriptive analytics, diagnostic analytics, predictive analytics, and prescriptive analytics. And two top items, predictive and prescriptive analytics, they answer uh, the most difficult question, it is x-axis, uh, the, the most difficult questions of companies, but at the same time, they bring the greatest benefit, the greatest value for 
companies. So this is just illustration how important uh, these tools are. And uh, I would like to describe Prognos' approach on this type of analysis, on predictive analysis. So uh, in business analytics space, under the name predictive analytics, uh, many vendors mean just static analysis. Uh, but the world is not static. It requires completely dynamic analysis, dynamic modeling. Uh, some vendors also provide uh, predictive analytics tools as a separate component, as a separate tools uh, that they often gain from a merger of some specialized vendor. And in this case, uh, these tools uh, become very poorly integrated with other uh, BI tools, with other analytical tools. And this is not very convenient for business users. And also there is a, another situation, another challenge of using predictive analytics that very often uh, such tools are really difficult to use for business users. Uh, I also have assumption why, what the reason of such, of such complexity. Uh, uh, we, we believe that uh, historically uh, predictive analytics components uh, they came from statistical packages that were very difficult, that, that were intended for professional people, for econometrists, for uh, experts. And of course, they, they, for example, provide command line, vast and configuration menus, very limited graphical representation, visualization. So they are really difficult to use. Uh, what Prognos does is completely different. So first of all, our approach is dynamic approach. We provide dynamic models, dynamic analysis, scenario analysis. Uh, as you already uh, seen, our predictive modeling components are natively integrated with all other components, so they use common metadata, they speak the same language. Uh, they also have rich functionality, so we have a lot of uh, different statistical and mathematical methods uh, in the Prognos platform. And at the same time, they are designed not only for highly qualified experts, but also for other categories of business users, such as company analysts, uh, marketers, industry analysts, and sometimes executives. And I would like to demonstrate this functionality, this mix of functionality, uh, on the example of our components, uh, going from maybe very easy, uh, first of all, going from very easy analysis to building more complicated models. Uh, let's assume that first of all you need to uh, make a number of transformations, you need to play with your data to build some dependencies. In this case you can work with uh, the so-called express modeling tool or time series analysis tool. So here you can have access to all your indicators from the data warehouse. You can choose some of them that you want to analyze. Uh, to drag and drop them to the modeling workspace. And now you can operate with these indicators as a time series. Uh, you can apply a set of methods, set of models, as I've already said, for example, arithmetic methods, aggregation methods, different types of smoothing, uh, different kinds of transformations, time transformation, mathematical transformation, uh, accumulation totals, and even forecasting and different regressions. So let's, for instance, forecast these our indicators by one of the methods, by linear trend. We've got the result for all indicators. We can check it on the chart. Uh, we can choose another indicator and forecast it with a different method, for example, with linear regression using our other indicators as factors. Okay, we've got uh, the result again, and now we can compare uh, two different results of forecasting of the same indicators that we got by different methods. And we can evaluate these results and maybe to choose which one is more appropriate for us at the moment. So this is the first example with, uh, we call it simple time series analysis. Uh, then, for example, you may want to, build, to, to structure your dependencies and, start, and to, to start building a uh, bigger model. Again, you can uh, take your indicators, you can drag and drop them, and now visualize them um, using graphical chart. So you can define 
uh, some of them as factors, as scenario variables, some of them as result variables. You can easily uh, connect them with dependencies to define method. Now it's linear regression, so the blue box is a result variable. So we've got simple equation, linear regression equation. We can define its parameters to see uh, specification, factors, coefficients, statistics. Uh, we can check summary statistics to see correlation matrix and so on and so forth. So we've built just now uh, one equation. And now let's assume that we've already built model. It's a real model. It's uh, relatively big. It contains many variables, many equations. Some of them factors, some of them modeled variables. And here you can both adjust or modify this model or uh, simply perform calculations, scenario calculations and compare uh, results. So let's first of all show how we can change this model that we already built, but every time you need to, sometimes you need to adjust it. So let's select some equation. Again, let's see parameters, uh, data for this equation. <coughs> Uh, correlation matrix. We can apply some statistical tests here to apply some transformation methods to factors and so on and so forth. And now you want to calculate this model that you already built. Uh, here you can conduct scenario forecasting. It's very important. It's our... Um, uh, so, so you can uh, define your scenario parameters on the forecasting period, for example, right on chart, then recalculate this model and in a few seconds to get the result of this assumption. So how this change influenced on your result variables. So we believe that uh, this ability to, uh, to, to conduct such kind of calculations without uh, very strong IT preparation it's, it's very important uh, to provide users such tool uh, that could be easily and quickly uh, provide him possibility to, uh, to perform different calculations. <laughs> to be well prepared for different business tasks, uh, as I've already said, Prognos platform includes a wide uh, range of different tools. So 